last Sunday, I went into, I mean, I was on cloud nine. I'll tell you what, our program last week, our service last week, was it just amazing? And so I felt like, you know, hey, man, I'm pretty, I was pretty in tune uh, walking into the council meeting with uh, what I believed the Lord was saying to me. And I walked in there, and the very first thing, right out of the gate, I shared with the council. I said, I believe God is telling us that 2020 is the year of the miraculous, that God wants to do all kinds of miracles in our midst. Now, is miracles only limited to the year 2020? No. But I believe that he's ushering us into something that we've only barely tasted. Okay? Now, we all know about the healing work of God, you know. The Bible says, you know, he's come to bind up, to heal the brokenhearted. You know, when you have an injury and you bind it up and it gets healed over time. I got to just tell you, that's still the work of God, right? Healings are the work of God. But, you know, when you read through Scripture, there's also, in addition to those healings, there's also miracles that happen. The instantaneous work of God. I think of the story when the... Um, when the friends had this crippled friend of theirs, and they, Jesus is in a house teaching, and they drag their friend there, get up on the roof of the house, dig their way through the thatch roofing, and they lower their friend. <laughs> Imagine you're in there. You're Jesus. And you're at the table, and everybody's around, and all of a sudden, this guy's lowered down right in front of you. And I love what Jesus said. He said, because of her faith, he's healed. It was interesting. Jesus didn't commend the faith of the man. He was commending the faith of the man who brought the man. And, you know, I believe God wants to activate faith. He wants to stir up faith. I'm going to be talking about faith through the month of January. I believe that's going to kind of give us uh, kind of the foundation for us believing in the miraculous and the things that God wants to do. When you study Scripture, you see miracles being uh, performed in many different ways. You see physical healings that happen just right there on the spot. How many of you ever had an instant healing from God before. Right on the spot. Raise them up high. Okay, look at that, you guys. These are testimonies all through the room, and he's going to do a lot more of it. Okay? I'll tell you a story about my dad. You've heard me talk about my dad. He is my hero. But, you know, b before I came on the scene, uh, somewhere in the early 50s, it, you know, maybe 1950, somewhere around there, that's about the time my dad committed his life to the Lord. And so there was this period of time between 1923 and about 1950 where he wasn't living for the Lord. He was in World War II. He was doing the things that, that guys would do when they had shore leave, go into the bar, you know, party, do this, do that. And, you know, you carry that baggage along with you. And there was that night, I don't know the whole story, I know my father and my mother both attended an Oral Roberts crusade, and he came forward. He gave his life to Jesus Christ, and instantly he was delivered from the alcoholism and all of this stuff. Now, am I pro-recovery groups? Absolutely, I am. But I also believe there are times where Jesus says, you're just delivered on the spot. I think we're going to see some of that this year. Amen? Can we, can we give the Lord applause for that? There's this other really wild story where Jesus' taxes were due. This would be nice to do if your taxes are due. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, yeah, we should pay our taxes, okay? So if you're a tax evader, you're disobeying Scripture, okay? So, but this is what Jesus did. He tells the disciples, he says, go down to the lake. The first fish you're going to catch is going to have four drachma. It's going to have an amount of money in the fish that's enough to pay the tax. How many of you would say that is a miracle? That's miraculous financial provision. 
right? Right? And so I really, now, here's another thing the Bible talks to us about, is that when there's a word, kind of a prophetic word, which this, I'm speaking prophetically to you, you may not recognize it because you haven't heard the regular Christian ease that comes with prophecy. I didn't even say prophecy, I was just prophesying. I didn't say, thus saith the Lord. I didn't do any. I'm just here sharing with you what I believe what God downloaded to me. Okay? And it says that those words ought to be confirmed. They ought to be confirmed by two or three other witnesses. Other people that say, you know what? That word seems right to the Holy Spirit and to me too. I agree with that word. And so I believe, church, I'm looking to see if anybody will stand and say, Pastor, I agree with you. 2020, we are stepping into a place we've not been before. We are going to see miracles become far more common, and they're going to be played out physically. They're going to be played out by people being delivered by drugs. It's going to be played out by emotional baggage being left behind. It's going to be played out with financial miracles, not only for our church, but for people, for you as individuals God's going to do something. Now, if this is a word that you say, that's a word from God, then stand up and give him an applause. Go ahead and have a seat. Let me read to you out of Mark. Because to be honest with you, I don't know that we needed that special revelation. Because he had already said it right here. We just needed to grab on to what had already been there. This is in Mark chapter 16. Just as Jesus is ready to ascend, he tells the disciples, Go into all the world, preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands and will not be harmed. They will drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them. They will place their hands on the sick, and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven. Then the disciples went out, and they preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and through them and confirmed the word with signs and wonders. (laughs) What's that verse right there on the wall say? So is this meant to be a history lesson of what he did? Or is he the same? That means that as these disciples went out and they preached, they laid their hands on the sick. The miracles were happening. It says, and he confirmed the word through signs and wonders. That verse tells us that that stuff is still happening. Amen. Now, let's talk just a little bit more about that. I've asked Alex to pick a song today. And Alex, I don't know, is it the next one, the breakthrough song, or is it a little later on? A little later on. Uh, we're going to sing a song about breakthrough. But don't wait till the breakthrough song till you start praying for the breakthrough, okay? But we're ta- this is what we're talking about. We need a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Now, breakthroughs. Now, <laughs> I got to tell you something, because the disciples came back from one of their... Uh, little outreaches that Jesus sent them uh, to do. And it didn't go real well for them. And they wondered what happened. And Jesus told them, because they were having trouble casting this spirit out of, I believe it was a child, actually. And Jesus told them, he said, well, this kind only comes out through, what do you say? Prayer and fasting. We like prayer. Fasting, huh? What? Hmm? Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? So if there's a call to fasting then, there's also a call to fasting now. And when we fast, you're going to feel hunger pains. 
when you fast, you're going to be mindful of the fact that you are denying your flesh. And in that place where you'd normally be consuming and filling your face with cheeseburgers and french fries and cherry cheesecake and all things nice, you're going to take that time and you're going to pray. And next week, I'm going to provide some, a resource for you that will help you have an idea of how to pray, to pray for this breakthrough, to contend for the miraculous, to begin to pray and to fast. So I'm calling our church to seven days, seven days. And I believe the last time this was done was when Sue did that. And she did that when I was so sick. I was so sick. I was going in. They were going to remove my colon. And I was scheduled for the next week. And she came up, and she got the microphone. She didn't rustle it out of my hand. She was kind. She asked, can I have the microphone for a moment? And she called the church. I'm sorry, I get a, I get a little emotional. I'm sorry. And, he, and you prayed. And I'm still fully intact. Now, don't worry. It's not show and tell. <laughs> okay, just take my word for it. I'm all here. And God heard your prayer. And now we're going to go another seven days of prayer and fasting. Am I asking you to go literally 21 meals without eating? Well, that's between you and the Lord. But what we have done is we've placed these 21 meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and these dates, and my goal is at church that we get every day and every meal covered by us collectively. Now, there may be some other things that God's calling you to fast. He may be calling you to, you know, shut off your social media for the week and really dial into the Lord. He may be calling you, turn down your you know, shut off your radio or pull away from your TV. There's other things you can fast. But what we have here on this list, this is a food fast. And, you're, you know, fast that particular meal, and we'll provide a resource for you that will help you know how to pray during that time. Does anybody confirm with me? It's like, yeah, this is, this is right, too. Amen? All right. So we're going to pass this around. And you may sign up for one of the meals. You may sign up for an entire day. You may sign up for, you know, maybe breakfast three of the days. I'm not that concerned with how it's done. I just want to make sure we got every meal covered. And there might be multiple p people fasting on, you know, a particular meal. And that's okay, too. Don't worry about it. If somebody's already got the particular meal or day you were planning we can have two. We can have three during that time. Amen? The more the merrier. <laughs> and I'm going to ask Sherry if, uh, you know, could you help me out? And let's make sure this gets to everybody today. And this is kind of between you and the Lord. This, you are not being forced. I don't want you to go home and say, he is making us fast. I'm not making you do that. This is a choice that we have. You you can have the clipboard pass by you, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, we won't say anything about it. Do you believe me? <laughs> we won't. <laughs> we won't. Yeah, brother. Yeah, so if you and you're welcome to do that, but I want to make sure all these meals are covered, and uh, and let me let me just say this as well, is that God receives this as worship. He draws near to you. How many of you fasted before? Okay, and not just because you were trying to lose some weight. I mean, it was a it was an intentional spiritual fast. How many of you felt like you kind of connected more closely with God during that time? Right? Amen. Hallelujah. So this is a beautiful thing. We're going to pray. We're going to contend for that. And I'm going to ask if our worship team can come. 
And Lord, as we, as we worship you today, we pray for your Holy Spirit to move on people, move in our church. Lord, move in a powerful way. We don't want to do church as usual. We're desperate for you. We're desperate for God to do something special, something profound, something life-altering in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.